by the way, there's, some, there's a couple of seats here if anyone wants to. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Um, first of all, I would like to thank the organizers for giving me the possibility to present our study here to you today, which focuses on the application of free modeling and spatial analysis in the interpretation of wild plant processing techniques, in particular concerning the uh, concerning brownstone tools. Uh, this the methodology I'm going to present to you is uh, part has been developed as part of the larger framework of the ERC-funded um, Hidden Foods project. The Hidden Foods project focuses on the role of plant foods uh, in the diet of Hellenic and Mesolithic foragers uh, societies over Southeast Europe, and uh, tackled through different uh, strands of evidence. For example, we are using human remains uh, in order to assess the health status of the past um, communities. We are using botanical remains to uh, describe the kinds, to define the kinds of plant species that were exploited. And then we are uh, analyzing material culture through experimental archaeology, user analysis, and residues analysis in order to study the function of these tools that are, that are, that are found in the context which are uh, the subject of this, of this project. In particular, as I said, are ground stone tools. Why do we focus on, oh, sorry, on ground stone tools? We focus on ground stone tools because a really, really large amount of these tools is usually found in the domestic context uh, of the sites uh, within the Dan Gorges, which, which represents the main study area uh, of the project. We study these tools uh, combining both uh, the data coming from some uh, our experimental, um, our ex uh, dedicated experimental frameworks, and of course what we observe on the um, on the archaeological artifacts themselves. So, as you all know, uh, groundstone tools are really um, complex tools with usually long life cycles. And um, in, in the case, as I said before, of the, the tools coming from the Dan Gorges, we have thousands of them which are, have been stored for more than 50 years uh, in dusty museum deposits. So, this um, brings up our, the first problem that we need to tackle in, these, uh, in our in our study, which is uh, being able to um, avoid uh, environmental contamination. So it is actually um, the, the risk to uh, have um, to mistake uh, some actual residues, modern residues, or um, uh, the residues coming from the depositional context of, of the tools with actual use related residues. Then another thing, another problem that we have is that we, uh, we can't move the, uh, the tools uh, from the museums to our uh, laboratory in Italy. So we need to find a way to study the tools fra far from, uh, from our lab. To do this, we developed actually um, uh, this, this methodological framework, which comprises both quantitative and qualitative analysis. Uh, in particular, we focus on three uh, techniques, which is the use of GIS softwares and 3D models to quantify uh, surface changes due to use, and also to analyze the spatial distribution of both uh, useware and residues. Then we um, analyze the surface of the tools, both archaeological and experimental, um, for user analysis at low and high magnifications. And of course, we, um, we also uh, residues analysis in order to uh, characterize and define the residues that we might find attractive in the crevices of the, of the, of the tools surface. So, our experimental uh, framework comprises the uh, collection of uh, raw materials which resemble the ones we have in our archaeological assemblages, along with the kinds of plants that we found in the neighboring areas of the, uh, um, of the, of the, of the study area. Um, most of the times, the plants are readily available uh, there, so we go there and collect them, but in some cases, uh, for specific species, like for example for the edge of species, we use experimentally grown um, crops, which allow us to have a good amount of material that we can process through different uh, activities during our, um, uh, during our experiments, in which we test different gestures, different uh, state of work in material, uh, in order to have a complete and uh, as detailed as possible uh, user and reference, and reference collection on which we can rely on uh, when we are going, when we have, we have to uh, interpret the data coming from the analysis of the archaeological artifacts. Uh, residue sampling, uh, after being used, the, the experimental 
brownstones are, are sampled for residues. Uh, you just you, you, you know, the normal standards for residue, residue sampling. The uh, residues are then observed under a cross-polarized uh, microscope in transmitted light. And there, uh, all the characteristics are recorded, like measurements, morphology, etc., and stored in a dedicated database. Use for analysis, uh, it's performed both applying both low and uh, high power approaches. So observing the surfaces after the tools are washed, of course, um, we, um, and, uh, we we record uh, what we see on the surface as like macroware. So for example, the modification in gray morphology, macropates, or macrostriations, we could affect the surfaces and are due to use. And at higher magnifications, we look at micropolishes, micropates, separations, and microstriations, which are related to each of the activity and the materials that we, that we process. So, um, coming to the main topic of the, of the talk. So, before and after uh, uh, each experiment, so well, well the um, unused and used tools are uh, scanned and the detailed 3D models are made through the application of close range photogrammetry. We are actually using close range photogrammetry over the laser scanning because it's a really like, flexible uh, way to, to, to create 3D models and also it's, uh, it's easy to bring all the equipment to the field. So it's, it's easier for us to, to, to kind of uh, have this setting set up everywhere more or less. With the, um, the high level 3D models, are, models are then treated in order to uh, um, carry on the uh, analysis of the surface, which is um, perform uh, processing the, uh, the, 3D, the 3D scan, so uh, through uh, GIS, through the Geographic Information System. Actually, we, we export each of the surface of the ground stone as a digital dimension model, a DM, and we treat it actually as a normal map. In particular, we focus on the analysis of the slope and surface roughness, which are actually really good indices, as you call it, us, to, um, in order to monitor and uh, observe uh, modification caused by use happening on the, on the surface of the ground. Space. For example, slope gives us the idea of uh, um, changes as depression, speeds, or level of areas, which, might, uh, which are caused by use. Well, the surface roughness allows us to see if there are changes in the, homogeneity, in the level of homogeneity of the, of the surface caused as well by use. Here are some examples of our, uh, the application of these analyses. This is a tool that we used uh, for processing Grumex crispus seeds and roots. We used this surface here on the left to grind seeds, while the uh, surface on the right was used to pound uh, roots of Grumex crispus. You can see on the top the surfaces before being used and after um, and um, the same uh, the, um, after and after being used. So you can see, for example, in this natural topographic future here, how it changes after the after the use. So it changes its overall outline, and also we can see a leveling of uh, of its surface with the disappearance of some of the small like the dep natural depressions that are that were present. On the other hand, we have like the upper part here of the of the tool, which at, the, at its natural state didn't have a lot of like natural depressions, was more or less flat. And after the, this area of the surface was used to pound uh, roots, you can see the, the development of these depressions, which which appear after after use. And this is another example of our result analysis, uh, actually applied to a tool that was used to process acorns. We uh, used three different areas of, of the tool. We exploited the, uh, on the upper right corner this natural depression to uh, pound uh, the nuts to open them. And you can see how after the pounding, we have the development of these really small uh, depressions inside uh, at the bottom of this natural uh, depression. The central part of the, um, of the surface was used to uh, grind the, uh, the nut once opened. And you can see how we have this Pretty high in uh, depression, which results to be more flat after after the use. And again, we have also the um, appearance of these um, these depressions on the central left uh, after the the use of this portion of the surface for grinding and uh, and pounding. Moving to surface roughness, we uh, see how we uh, we can see how the changes uh, happen to to the use and how they are. Uh, happen differently. 
So um, we can see these are the same the same tools, of course. And you can see how after the grinding of the seeds, this part, which was the one used, appeared really, really much more homogeneous than, than before on the, on, the upper, on, the, uh, on the upper part. And just a reminder, the uh, blue color is will, will indicates really homogeneous, uh, the, lo the lower uh, value of homogeneity, so it's really homogeneous surface, while to the red is the higher um, value of um, roughness value. And you can see also here the, the natural feature that you will see before, how it became more flat and homogeneous after use. And on the other side, we see the RN used for pounding, how it was more or less homogeneous at, it, at its natural state, and it became high, um, it, its level of roughness increased after it was used to pound uh, numerous Christmas uh, roots. The, the same happened on the, uh, on the tool used for the processing seed of acorns. Uh, here you can see in the natural pit on the upper left how we have this an increase of uh, roughness at the bottom of the natural pit. Uh, you can see also how it uh, had a little decrease of roughness in the central part of which, which was used for grinding. And then we have again an increase of the roughness values in the area that was used to pound and grind the for uh, grinding and pounding activities. So what we uh, what we, we did what we did it was uh, also try to test if actually these low roughness areas in the tools correspond to uh, areas where actual uh, use were developed over the surface. So we isolated the areas with the lowest value of, of roughness. And we check, we did a blue blind test, and we check with our user analyst if these areas actually correspond to the areas where we can see user. And in all of the cases, we have uh, really, uh, we were in accordance. So you can see how they, uh, in different, uh, how they are displaced uh, across the surface. Also, they correspond to polished areas on the, on, on the surface. These are other examples. It's the tool used for acres processing. This um, the analysis of this uh, of the uh, surface uh, modifications through JS allow us to actually uh, quantify some really important aspects in the to determine the use of, of tools, which is the dimensions of the polished areas, their density, and the percent of utilized surface of a given tool, and also the variation of slope, uh, depending on the activity performed and on the uh, working material and on its, its status. Another part of, the, of our methodology involves the uh, special analysis of residues. To do this, we um, actually divided the uh, surface of the ground stone in six transects. We uh, sample uh, each transect and uh, one and uh, um, each uh, and a single uh, glass slider is um, uh, mounted for each transect, and then we count the impact starches uh, found in each, uh, in each slide, so corresponding to each transect. We focus on impact starches because these are the ones which give us more information regarding the uh, species of plant that we are looking at. So for now we focus on, on these ones. Uh, you can see how uh, we have differences in the displacement of residues given by the activity performed. So you can see the tools where grinding was performed. You have most of the index touches localized at the periphery of the, of, the, of the surface. While, for example, where pounding was, was performed, a lot of index touches were remained in the utilized area. While here, where I've done a little of the grinding, you can see most of the starches are displaced on the outer parts. Uh, again, this is the uh, most similar patterns. Here, <coughs> grinding was uh, performed as well. You can see how most of the uh, impact specimens were outside the utilized areas. And in our tool that was used for the processing of acorns, you can see in the areas where pounding was performed, we found most of the impact specimens. While on the grind on the area used for grinding, most of the uh, of the starches were localized outside. So uh, in this way, we uh, managed to observe patterns related to the special distributions of residues across the surface of our tools. Uh, we analyzed how the different nature, like seeds, roots, and etc., actually affect the distribution of residues on, uh, on the surface, and how the activities performed as well 
relates to the spatial distribution of the, of the residues. Uh, these provide us new means for residue sampling, so we know maybe better where to sample when we're going to, to look at our archaeological collections. And um, uh, in this way, we provide like a combined approach, uh, including, as I said, both quantitative and quantitative analysis in the study of macro tools specifically. We uh, try to test these groundbreaking techniques in recording archaeological samples using the free scanning and providing new means to enhance the strategies of residue sampling. And finally, we're trying to limit and monitor the environmental con contamination due to storing and post excavation um, condition. Of course, this is an ongoing um, uh, methodology. We are now focusing on also the active uh, tools involved in our experiments. So we are we are working with new materials, new raw materials, different kinds of residues. So it's we are continuing to to work. So thank you very much.